I've been thinking about triangle systems lately. How they work, how they don't, how they're more useful for explaining strategies in matches than they are in making one. I've been reading a few articles about rock, paper, scissors that I've stashed in my bookmarks to mull things over, and in my reading, I think I've sussed out a more recent trend that these articles don't cover. I'm going to start from the top, so that I can be as clear as possible. So, in many types of fighting games, when players are at close range, they find themselves in a situation where they have three options. Some form of attacking, some form of avoiding an attack, and some way to hit someone while they avoid an attack. If all players are using characters that can do all these things, players will inevitably have to pick one to progress. A traditional, tournament-style fighting game usually has a triangle system that looks like this. I'm going to invoke the spirit of Supreme Court Associate Justice Potter Stewart and assume that you know what each option looks like when you see it. After the first instance of RPS, two things usually happen. First is that players start going into a chain of RPS decisions based on the first one until the situation goes back to neutral, and the second is that after that first clash, players may or may not start keeping track of each other's tendencies, which skews the model and prevents it from being true RPS because there's a set precedent. This is the, uh, That's my most thorough definition of a triangle system. The triangle system is a useful way of summarizing what happens when two players make decisions in neutral at the same time. Although it oversimplifies what's actually going on in a match, and most games need to make up their own mind about simultaneous choices between players. Thanks to all the imitation and cross-pollination in the fighting game genre's boom period, many, many fighting games have nearly identical models. And the main difference between them is the amount of risk and reward for each option, which is different from game to game. That said, there's another factor for these systems that isn't discussed very often, and I thought covering it was important enough to pull myself away from Strange Journey Redux in order to make a video about it. The way I see it, Triangle systems sit on a gradient between hard and soft, where some games are harder or softer than others. I would define a hard triangle system as one where each option unambiguously wins or loses. Timing is still an important factor, but the window of timing for a successful counter will be so wide that a simultaneous pick will always lead to the same result. Fighting games that are advertised as being simplified will use hard triangle systems for the sake of mass appeal. They're supposedly easier to understand and less intimidating. Many, many licensed fighting games within the last 15 years or so feature this sort of system, and many in the future will use them as well. The Kenichi game that I covered a while back is a good example. In that game, one option will beat or lose to others for as long as it's active. Versus-style minigames, like the Versus mode in Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure, are also on the harder side of the scale. The Dead or Alive series also has a triangle system, and the latest entries in the series will even tell you what's happened in big glowing text. To be fair though, lots of fighting games will try to spell out what happened to you as clearly as possible with big, colorful letters. Some will even scream at their players to remind them of their mistakes. Anyways, there are also soft triangle systems. Systems that can be circumvented by all sorts of exceptions, exploits, and system mechanics. Whether unintentional or intentional. Things like unblockable attacks, command throws with invincibility frames, option selects, guard meters, and the list goes on and on. In soft systems, an option can even lose in situations that it would normally win under in the right circumstances. This flexibility ostensibly gives fighting games their depth and longevity. Games with hard systems tend to die off in both competitive and casual play relatively quickly, while games with soft systems tend to thrive. In those rare instances where players try to figure out why this is the case, they often conclude that games with lots of glitches and options stay alive because they have a wider diversity of outcomes, and rely more on the human factor. I'm not 100% sure this logic holds up, considering how the most ubiquitous game with RPS, actual rock, paper, scissors, has the hardest triangle system in existence, requires reads so hard they're practically adamantine, and has lasted for thousands of years. Video game developers could only dream of reaching the sort of audience that Rock, Paper, Scissors has. Then again, people will play anything if it's free, so maybe it's not all it's cut out to be. 
So, let's push the actual game of rock, paper, scissors aside and get back to the core point here. Not all triangle systems are equal, and comparisons of quality between different types generally boils down to personal preference. Normally, that's the end of the discussion on this topic. You like it this way, I like it that way, let's agree to disagree, etc, etc. I've noticed, however, that game designers have become more comfortable with using their take on RPS as a selling point for their game. Developers and armchair analysts alike have fussed over different ways to make a fighting game that can achieve mass appeal and still provide some value to the competitive niche. Number one with a bullet is make it cool. Give people something to attach themselves to and they will do so. A couple of rungs below that are simplification and balance. Auto combos, simplified control schemes, combat mechanics, and so on and so forth. They've all been discussed at length and attempted with varying results, each attempting to simplify or rebuild the flow of a fight so that their game can reach the mashka of meta, where new players feel like they're putting up a fight, regardless of their skill level, while experienced players keep playing long after the game's novelty wears off. Game designers have added RPS to the list over the years, and while it's not a common talking point, they will promote it the same way they do everything else. When Dragon Ball Fighters' early build was making the rounds, for example, the game's producer, Tomoko Hiroki, plugged the Dragon Rush as an alternative to the typical throw, and as something more in line with the style of Dragon Ball overall. Also, in lieu of uh, throwing mechanic, there is a special Dragon Rush. Dragon Rush. Dragon Rush, where you just chase your opponent, you launch him to the air, and that's in case the opponent's really heavy on the blocking. You would normally throw someone, but we have a system called Dragon Rush instead. Wow. It's a plausible switch, but the thing to keep in mind is that it was part of the game's promotion, a selling point for people who hate throws which is a category of players who have existed for almost as long as the genre itself has existed. A less overt example of this sort of thing can be found in the Tekken series. Tekken had some growing pains between the original Tekken Tag Tournament and Tekken 5. In Tekken Tag Tournament, poking and backdashing was a frustratingly efficient playstyle. It wasn't the dominant style, but it did skew RPS towards attacking, and it was enough of a problem for people to complain. T4 was similar, and in T4, juggle damage was lower compared to other games on top of that. And depending on the slant of the stage you were on, combos in general were a gamble. So, in Tekken 5, the crush system was added. Tekken 5's take on it was simple. Most jumping attacks would beat low moves, and most low moves would beat high moves, without much concern for frame advantage or disadvantage. That stuffed the poking strat, which satisfied the players who complained about it. However, since high crushes usually overlapped with moves that launched on hit or counter hit, Tekken 5's RPS was still skewed towards attacking. And because small amounts of frame advantage weren't as safe as they used to be, the meta shifted. I don't know enough about Tekken to say whether these after effects were positive or negative, but it's clear that the crush system was a direct response to the issues with Tag Tournament and 4. And I can see why game designers make these changes. Hard triangle systems have a bad rep because of the lack of flexibility I mentioned earlier, to the point where games are derided for being pure RPS, whether it's a fair complaint or not. Like I said before, it's mostly a matter of preference. For example, I'm comfortable with more lax games, and I've thought about stuff like this long enough to say that with confidence. Sometimes I think people who complain about RPS don't think about it all that much. I suspect that while it's common to fawn over more flexible systems, deep down, a lot of people want that guaranteed punish. They want to know that if they see something coming, they'll beat it 100% of the time. I suspect that most players respond more positively to hard RPS. I'm so sure about this that I'm almost undoubtedly projecting somehow, but I know I'm not wrong. And I know I'm not wrong because of how devs sell their games on RPS and how well that tends to go over. It's not like people will say, whoa, this RPS is crazy, I need this in my veins. But the general public wants to have a fighting chance in their fighting games. And anything that makes them feel better about their chances has the potential to win them over. Developers will present their newer work, or their new fighting game IP, as something with a soft triangle system. And then they add little breaks in the chain in order to skew things one way or the other. Sometimes it's subtle. 
like adding special animations to successful counters or skewing the risk reward for some options over others to a larger extent than what one would expect. Other times, it's blatant stuff like moves that crush specific types of options or AT fields that are coded to force their way through one another, or just giving a certain type of character a boost or handicap in the hopes of reassuring the player base that they won't have to deal with certain options. The important thing to note here is that this is not just an extra layer added onto an existing game mechanic, like EX highs and EX lows or unblockable properties on single hits or things like that. Game designers will deliberately add little cracks to their RPS to open the game up the way they see fit. They put the flexible stuff in on their terms and patch out anything that doesn't fit the sort of risk reward system that they want. Tekken's crush system, DBFC's dragon rushes, hell, the Street Fighter 2 series is probably the oldest and best example of what I'm talking about. The World Warriors had randomized factors for many of its mechanics. There was random damage, random stun, a 1 in 512 chance of performing a special attack with a normal attack, and a similar chance of blocking an attack without holding backwards on the control stick, amongst others. Between World Warriors and Super Turbo, most of those random elements were either toned down or removed, because random, non-standardized factors mess with competitive play. And after Super Turbo, they were generally removed from Street Fighter altogether. Hmm. I suppose that means that the trend of the RPS gradient is recent, but the practice has been around since the early 90s. Hmm. Well, there you go. And again, I must stress that this is a gross simplification of what's going on. RPS doesn't really do a good job of explaining how this stuff affects a game outside of that specific close range paradigm that I explained earlier. This stuff goes further than that. I just use it because I want you all to see that it does go somewhere. That is not just minutia. RPS is one of the squishiest, most subjective parts of fighting games, but changing it can mess with the game just as much as anything else. And we, the public, will probably see more gimmicked RPS if other mechanical gimmicks fall out of fashion in the future.